Now there's a word. Amen. In the book of John, that's the gospel of John. It's a short word, but it's what our world needs today. Mm. Mark chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, mm. I say unto thee, except, except. Mm. a man be born again, yeah. he cannot see the kingdom of God. Let's talk about today's pressing need. In the text, it's night now. close of another busy day. Jesus is alone. And suddenly there's a knock at his door. When he opens the door, there stands a man decorated with his colorful robe. He's a member of the Jewish Sanhedrin Council, which is comparable to our Supreme Court. May I speak with Jesus? Jesus invites him in. Now here's a man with all the qualifications of a great and good church member. A community would be proud to have this man as a residence. Yeah. Yeah. He's got all the qualifications for a good and great church member. He would be faithful in attendance, in serving, and giving, and he would probably hold several offices yeah. in a Baptist church. Now those who are observant of the church know that the church needs faithful members today. But in, sp in spite of all these achievements, he lacked the one thing necessary to qualify him for entrance into an experience of God because he had a hereditary and chronic disease, which is known as sin. 
but he was unaware of his declining condition. So he seeks out Jesus. And in order for him to do that, he had to trample down many barriers. First of all, he had to step aside of Pharisaical isolation. He descended from the perch of political prestige, trampled underfoot professional pride, ignored the customary proprieties of time and place. He had to come down to talk with Jesus because he was a noble person. So he stood before Jesus, and I want you to listen to it. He made a grand confession. He admitted his personal subordination when he called Jesus rabbi. He called Jesus my teacher. But this was a man who already had credentials showing that he was a great teacher. He confessed that he had made a careful investigation of Jesus because he says, we know. He looked into Jesus. The investigation it caused him to come to some settled conclusions about Jesus. But he was the only one willing to admit it. The Sanhedrin Council had investigated Jesus and found no fault in him. But, G, but Nicodemus confesses that Jesus is a teacher with supernatural authority. He said, no man could do the miracles that we have seen you do if he did not come from God. Amen. Now, don't forget the early description I gave you of this man. He was not only confessing that Jesus was a teacher, but that he was sent from God. Now, at this point, we would say he's on good, solid ground, isn't he? Yeah. He confessed Jesus' divine certification. But before he gets an opportunity to explain just why he wanted to talk to Jesus, Jesus speaks words like a bolt of thunder. What Jesus has to say crosses all philosophies and psychologies and theologies of men. What Jesus has to say runs contrary to all human reasoning. This declaration of Jesus is introduced with the mark of certainly verily, verily. No other person in the Bible ever dared to use these words together. You don't believe me? Read the whole Bible. You'll find nobody in the Bible that ever used two verilies at the same time. And the original meaning is amen, amen. And that means firmness, solidarity, unchangeableness, dependability, Truly, surely, certainly, absolutely, positively, without doubt, without debate. Amen, amen. In other words, Nicodemus, what I'm about to say is mighty important. And it's authoritative and there's no debating it. What did he say? First of all, he said, accept. Mm -mm -mm. You got all these credentials. So many people would have you in their organization. You look good. But accept 
except. Notice the universality of the statement. Except a man. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, but he's directing this to everyone. Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, with all your credentials, is one thing that you need the most that you don't have. And that is you need to be born again. It's possible now that Nicodemus, because of his position and prominence, had grown cold to his personal need. He may have fallen into the snare of professionalism and the habit of duty, and that's a common pitfall of all who serve in holy things. Notice how the central truth is expressed. Be born. Be born. Now, birth is the communication of substance in the propagation of kind. I'm going to say that again. Birth is the communication of substance in the propagation of kind. The order is always from parent to offspring. The parent is the origin. The child is the result. The new birth is the communication of substance initiated by the father and culminating in the birth of a child. When the father communicates his substance, the child is the result and the child must be the child of God. Good gracious, what, what, what did I just say? What did I just say? Jesus said to him, you must be born again. In other words, the communication of substance, divine substance, has to be passed on to you, and the result is that you will become a child of God. Except, and that's the only way it will happen. Notice the goal is the kingdom of God, except a man and a woman be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Notice the goal, the kingdom of God. Now, now, Nicodemus said, I heard you clearly, but how? Jesus looked at him and said, do you know anything about the wind? The wind blow." wherever it wants to. You cannot find the place where the wind starts blowing, but you know it blows. How do I know it blows? Because it moves things. The wind blows where it will, and you cannot tell where it's going and where it came from. And so is everybody that's born of the Spirit. You know you've been saved, but you don't know precisely when you were saved. Come on, Charles Duncan. Don't do that. Don't do that to me, Brother Duncan. Don't do that. You're unsaved, sitting in the pew. You came in unsaved. But if God is working with you, when you make up your mind to get up and come forward, the wind has already been blowing and you've already been saved. So all you know is 
it was on day such and such, but I don't know the time and I can't tell the minute. All I know is something happened and I jumped up, but Nicodemus still had some problems. So Jesus said, let me help you out a little more. He said, do you remember in the Old Testament, you're a teacher of the Old Testament, when God was punishing the children of Israel because of disobedience? He said, do you remember Moses was instructed to make a serpent brass, put down a pole and hold it up in the air? And that serpent is a symbol of the medical field today. And a plague came through Israel, knocking down people. And the word from God is, was, all you have to do is look up at the serpent. And so they were down there on the ground. But if you look up unto the serpent, thou shalt be saved. How does it happen, Jesus? Look to Jesus and obey his word and thou shalt be saved. And society doesn't need any more elected officials. We need to get people born again. And how do we do that? We spread the gospel. And along with the spreading of the gospel, we support it by the life we live. And so when we get men and women converted, born again, then we make our world so much better. And finally, we find that wonderful verse in the middle of the discussion for God so loved the world and he didn't just say it he demonstrated it and he didn't just demonstrate it in small style but in grand style he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And all you have to do it's when you hear a sermon and when the minister says the doors of the church are open and the choir starts singing and two voices starts talking to you. One of them says come and the other one says don't. One of them says, come now. And the other voice says, come later. And you might get on the edge of your seat. And the negative voice causes you to sit down. But if you can break free from that and stand up and come forward, all oh, glory to God, thou can be saved and have eternal life. And that's your message for the day. Now the word has been proclaimed. Now you make up a decision as to what you want to do with the word. And when you reject the word, you're rejecting God. 
So if you desire to come, you can come right now. Come to Jesus. And if you can just stand where you are. And the walk from you to here is easy. of the opportunity with your mouth. 